You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Webb, and I'm here with Dr. David Klingler for our Teach Me the Bible podcast. And today, David, we're continuing this discussion as as Peter is addressing those uh, Jewish believers who've been scattered abroad. We've walked through chapter 3, this whole issue of why would we be willing to suffer Mm -hmm. following Christ's example. But uh, we connected the last time this suffering for what is right and it bringing us in this moment, it gives us an opportunity to share our faith, which is a phenomenal opportunity. But as we said the last time, we have to embrace that conviction way before the situation. We have to we have to have our theology right, as you said. Yes. And so we're continuing this, and as we move into chapter four, uh, uh, as always, you see certain words, the therefore, and right. so connected right. to chapter yep. three. So yep. let's just, continue right into that yeah. discussion. Yeah, it's like uh, when, when you were, uh, well, when we were kids, I don't know if kids even do, I don't even know if they have blackboards anymore. But when we got in trouble, no. when you got in trouble, you used to have to write, I yeah, will on, not. On the blackboard. Yeah. Yeah. I will not, you know, chew gum. I will not, whatever times. it was. Yeah, times. <laughs> well, we need to write a hundred times, right? Mm-hmm. You were called for the purpose of suffering yes. just as Christ suffered, right? Yes. Uh, and, and so Peter has said that over and mm-hmm. over and over. Mm-hmm. Christ suffered, you will suffer. Right. Uh, you need to, to remind yourself of that daily. Absolutely. Because we don't like it. <laughs> no. Christ suffered. He did it. He did it. Mm-hmm. I'm not suffering. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've had enough of it, right? Uh, so therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same purpose, right? Mm-hmm. So he's going to say in 4 1, he says it back There's in chapter blackboard. 2, you know, uh, for you were called for this purpose. Because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live in the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lusts of men, but mm-hmm. for the will of God. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. This isn't talking about Christ suffering in the flesh. This is talking about, uh, you know, Christ suffered. Arm yourself for the same thing. Mm-hmm. Because when you suffer in the flesh, when you signed mm-hmm. up and you've suffered in the flesh, then uh, you have ceased from sin. Now, here's the problem. The antagonist is over there saying, uh, you guys are in sin. He said, oh, no. No, we're not. Uh, we're actually on the right side of this because we're doing what's good and right in the eyes of the Lord. We're a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Christ suffered. Mm-hmm. We're suffering. We're taking the gospel to the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. We're being persecuted by you. We're suffering in the flesh. And so that is a, um indication that they're on the right side of they're this. In they're, they're, they're on the right mm-hmm. side of this equation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. See, the lust of men says, I don't want to suffer. Mm-hmm. But uh, the will of God says, you signed up for suffering. Yes. You're doing what's good right in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, for the time has already uh, passed, which is sufficient for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles. You know, go over there and have your best life now. Having pursued the course of sensuality and lust and drunkenness and carousals and, you know, and all the, you know, the the drinking parties and abominable adult. This is what Israel did in the Old Testament. They went down there and they joined mm-hmm. the Gentiles, mm-hmm. right? Paul's mm-hmm. going to say this in, uh, in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, you know, uh, y- y'all were over there and you're d- dead in your trespasses and sins. We came over there and we joined you. Mm-hmm. We just joined right in, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that, that ship has sailed. It's, time's already passed, Peter's saying. And in all of this, they are surprised that you do not run with them into the same excess of dissipation and they malign you but they uh, shall give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Uh, he goes already said back in chapter 3 that, you know, that the dead are, you know, that are in prison. They're ready to be judged, the living be mm-hmm. judged. There's a judgment that's coming for all. Uh, for the, the gospel has for this uh, purpose been preached even to those who are dead. Again, back mm-hmm. to the Noah mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they've heard the gospel uh, so that though they are judged in the flesh as men, they may live in the spirit according to the will of God. So they, they, they you know, the, the gospel went out. It was preached. Uh, the spirit of Christ through the prophets preached. Uh, and these people had a choice to make. They either going to believe it or reject it. Uh, they'll live according to the spirit or, or uh, be judged in the, in the flesh. Right. 
And so this whole thing is looking towards the end, right? It's mm-hmm. looking towards the end. So the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of sound judgment. Um, understand God's plan, God's purposes. Paul says it this way. Um, there's a race set before you. You got to run the race according to the rules to win the prize. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the rules of the race are suffer now, future reward, right? So be of sound judgment. Uh, understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand his plan, his purposes to Christ suffered, you suffer. So be sober uh, and for uh, for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. Uh, as each one has received a special gift or, or a, a gift, mm-hmm. employ it in serving one another. This is back to the using the gifts in the body to mm-hmm. build up the body of Christ as good stewards uh, of the manifold grace of God. Uh, and so this, he's really going to go down through the, some of the same things that Paul covers uh, in, uh, you know, in Ephesians chapter four mm-hmm. uh, in, uh, you know, talking about the building up of the body. So whoever speaks, let him speak as it were the utterances of God. Uh, whoever serves, let him do so um, uh, by the strength of God, um, which uh, which supplies, so that all things, uh, God in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Beloved, uh, do not be surprised at this fiery ordeal among you. This is nothing new, mm-hmm. uh, which has come for your for your testing and your through your testing your. You're refining. I'm reminded of James's words over there, you know, mm-hmm. considered all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith works for endurance. This, this is all part mm-hmm. of it. So Peter's going to say it. James is going to say it. Paul's going to say it in Romans chapter 5 and, and in other places. Uh, so this isn't new. This is the same old thing. This, is, uh, this has come upon you for your testing, and testing refines you. Uh, and so it's not as though some strange thing were happening to you, but to the degree that you share in the sufferings of Christ, there it is again, Mm -hmm. keep on rejoicing, (laughs) rejoicing in suffering. They'll ask you to give it a reason for the hope that is within you. Uh, Yeah. So that uh, also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exultation, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, If, you know, if it be God's will that you should suffer, that's okay, right? Uh, uh, If you are reviled for for the name of Christ, you're blessed, Right. When they ask you, well, why are you suffering? Because Christ suffered for me. And then, and then they curse you. Well, you've you got a blessing coming, right? You've got resurrection coming because you are, you are in Christ. Because the spirit of the glory uh, uh, of, uh, and of God rests upon you. By no means let any of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer. As a, you know, you, you don't suffer for evil. Yeah, doing wrong. For doing what's mm-hmm. evil in the eyes of the Lord, but for doing what's good. If you suffer for following Christ, if you suffer for being a Christian, don't be ashamed. Let him not be, uh, feel ashamed. But in the uh, in that name, in the name of Christ, let him glorify, glorify God. God. For it is time for, for judgment to begin with the household of God. Um, and by the household there, you know, he's talking about this household, this household of Israel. The Gentiles are being brought into it. Uh, but this re- refining fire mm-hmm. is happening within the house of Israel, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it, it's starting right here with uh, with the, the, the Jewish believer. Um, so, uh, for it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is with difficulty that the righteousness are saved, it's you know, and, and the difficulty is through through suffering, through endurance that mm-hmm. the or righteous spirits. are saved. Mm-hmm. What will become of the godless man of this and of the sinner who rejects Christ and rejects suffering? So mm-hmm. therefore, let those also who suffer according to the will of God entrust their souls to the faithful creator in doing what is right. It seems like every four or five verses, he's saying the same thing over and over. I was kidding to say, he's kind of redundant here. Yeah, he's writing it a hundred times on the board. Oh, by right? <laughs> Keep reminding yourself, yeah. suffer for doing good. Yeah. Don't suffer for doing evil. Christ suffered for doing good. You mm-hmm. are called for this purpose. Uh, he was raised from the dead. You will be raised from the dead. You will mm-hmm. have a blessing. Mm-hmm. Don't let them curse you. If you're cursed, if you're reviled, if you're hated, don't do it in return. 
but uh, you know, but return a blessing. It's just over and over and over. And you say, well, why is he being so redundant? Because we need to hear it over yeah. and over and over because it's really easy to forget. Uh, it's easy to remember when things are going well and you're mm-hmm. sitting in seminary class or in church. And, oh, yes, we need to suffer. We need to suffer. In the, in the midst of the moment, uh, when your husband is being a monster or you're, you know, you're bought, whatever it is, uh, all of a sudden the rubber meets the road and it's easy to forget. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for these uh, believers, Jewish believers, um, to, um, to profess Christ, to be hanging out with Gentiles, uh, mm-hmm. would be making yourself unclean. And, uh, and that would restrict your ability to enter into the synagogue and, and yeah. you know, re- rejection in the community and, and suffering becomes very real. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, think about, uh, the example today of the Muslim who comes to Christ, Boy, he's going to, oh, yeah. he's going to suffer, um, uh, in all kinds of ways for that. Mm-hmm. Well, this is uh, in, in, in much the same way mm-hmm. here. Uh, and so, uh, so suffering for, for the cause of Christ, uh, is, um, ought to be common to us. Mm-hmm. It's not anymore, but it should be. Well, what a great leadership book for church leadership. Oh gosh. Yes. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Which, which by the way is right where chapter five is going. Right? <laughs> yes. he's, he's just walking right <laughs> he's walking into, right into yeah. that. <laughs> so, uh, you elders listen. <laughs> Yep. You know, you, you right. pastors paying yep. attention. Yep. Therefore, I exhort, <laughs> exhort the, the elders. elders. Yeah. And, and so, <laughs> so here's what you teach. Here's what you preach all the time. Yeah. And why is it so important? Well, because it's going to be very enticing to mm-hmm. tell people what they want to hear. Yeah. It's going to be difficult to tell people what they need to hear. Mm-hmm. My experience has been, here's the, here's the great irony in that, is that um, people know what they want to hear, but they're living reality. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, what they want to hear is it's going to go well, hang your rabbit's foot on your rear view mirror, find your four leaf clover and buy a lottery ticket. It's mm-hmm. going, you know, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. The reality is they know different. Yeah. And so explain to me why you the rabbit's that? foot's not working. Yeah. Reconcile that. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me explain it to you. You think it's supposed to work. That's right. Because you were called for this purpose since Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example to follow in his steps. That's the plan. How's that going? You go, yeah. now that rings a bell. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you suffer, you endure, uh, in, in, unless Christ returns and fixes this mess, you die. Mm-hmm. Um, but you will be raised. And so you better figure out the rules of the game so that you can run the race well sure. uh, and receive a blessing. And mm-hmm. and during the course of running the race well, and enduring the the suffering that will surely come, uh, you get to have people ask you, "Give me a reason for the hope that is within you." Mm-hmm. And there's your chance, right? And so right. this all ties together. It does. It, it's not popular. It's not fun. No, but there is something undeniably true about it that is comforting and brings joy and peace and patience and and uh, all the fruit of the spirit that, yeah. just comes abounding. <laughs> yep. yep. So, well, so that's it. So next week we'll pick it up in yes, uh, in chapter five. Chapter five. Well, David, thank you so much. I want to encourage our our listeners, our viewers, to uh, stay with the conversation. And as always, just want to encourage them to gather together with other believers, walk through the Bible studies, walk through the devotions, and and uh, also want to encourage them as we're leaving uh, for today, if they have any questions, to email you, and you'll get back with them. And so excited about what God's doing through this podcast. I'm very thankful as it's yep. God's just opening doors to take his story to so many people uh, around the world. So yep. thank you, David, for the gift. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's Word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.